Hello and welcome to Animal Watch and today we're talking high content wolf dogs. Content wolf dogs have a controversial reputation. Some people desire them, others fear them. But what exactly is one? High content means a level of wolf content bred into a dog which generally amasses to over 70% wolf. But this is where it gets very complicated, as there are so many ways you can breed a wolf dog. So today I'm visiting Natalie Lagstam of Watermill Wolves, who is the proud mummy of a multi-generational selective high content wolf dog called Winston, otherwise known as a North American Indian dog or a North Aid wolf dog. Winston and Natalie, I've got to say, oh my goodness me, he's flipping gorgeous, he's flipping gorgeous. What type of wolf dog is Winston? So Winston is a multi-generational high content and he's been selectively bred for all of those generations really to have the charm and charisma <laughs> that you see here today. He is a high content so that essentially means there's more wolf in his ancestry than dog however it's important to understand that there's nobody out there trapping wolves these days and crossing them with huskies or whatever all of these animals have been selected and bred for many many generations now i think the important thing is to to explain to people at home that obviously aren't used to the way we describe f1s f2s multi-generational that um, when you have a wolf dog when you have a first generation wolf dog we have a wolf bred to a dog mm -hmm. that is what you get when you when you have an f1 when you have multi-generational it can mean that he still has a high content but he has been with people for many generations as you're saying breeding selectively for temperament so still keeping the high content but creating a personality that is much easier to to live with exactly so, exactly and um, if you were to guess what his percentage would be, what do you think it would be roughly? So he does classify as being in the high content range, which by the um, National Lupine Association of America means that he's over 80%. So there's, there's quite a bit of wolf in him by ancestry. But as I said, we're talking over lots of generations now. There's also in him a small amount of other breeds like um, sled dog and also a little bit of a mountain breed as well. There's a little bit of Pyrenean yeah, in his ancestry. That's unbelievable, yeah. Pyrenean. A tiny little bit. The, these, that's these. his paw in my hand and I've got big mitts. And as you can see, <laughs> they're, they're, <laughs> they're mighty mitts, yeah. uh, and they're obviously, especially when you're looking obviously at, at the North American um, wolf, which is what's in his ancestry, yeah. um, they to do a lot of running on snow. Yes. So essentially he's got massive inbuilt snowshoes. Hop, 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 hop. Good boy. Good boy. So we, okay, he's, so he's this incredible black colour, so how old is he right now? Exactly? So Winston is actually just a baby, or rather a teenager, if you hadn't gathered from his behaviour. <laughs> so he's about two and a half about right now. And, half. and what happens is they, they phase out, or grey out, um, very early in life. So actually a year ago, even in the spring, if you'd have come to see him, his face would have been almost jet black. And already you can see that that's starting to change now and if you were to come back and see him in about three years time he's going to look almost completely grey all over 
if you came back in 10 years time, he's going to look like a white wolf. Tell us a little bit about some of the stuff that Winston's done so far in his short but very brilliant life. <laughs> so his career is only just starting really. It's the sort of thing that obviously we introduce them to gradually and we just build on if they enjoy the early experiences that they've had. So he's done some music videos. He was in a music video for Circle Waves called Wake Up. Um, where he got to play a big scary nightmare wolf, um, which of course he isn't at all. No, I don't. <laughs> this upsets me. Everybody always it's wants always wolves the to play the mean characters. They always want the scary wolf. Uh, but we, we do have a, a, another job where he's he's not such a scary wolf, and that's he he's a. Got <laughs> my hair again. <laughs> He's, um, he's an honorary mascot of uh, Wolverhampton Wanderers Football Club. So he, he does go up there to meet and greet the fans and, and whatever at the, the beginning of matches. And um, this is actually something that he really has taken to and really enjoys. Just wandering around, getting attention from everybody. And will you um, be training him for film work eventually? So we are training him up for that kind of thing. It's something that... that takes time. We, we, we really introduce him to very, very gradually. He's done a lot of promo work, so often actually when um, events are, are released, sometimes they get booked for promotional work. He's done some red carpet work in London for a Game of Thrones series, Ooh, for example. Game of Thrones! Um, he was only a youngster, and the one thing I always say about well, dogs in general, but especially wolf dogs, they're, they're great levellers. You can't have any pride or ego when working with them. They'll, they'll reduce you to uh, laughter or tears very, very quickly. <laughs> so his first big red carpet event, and what does he do? He has a massive poo in the middle of the red carpet. I love it. I <laughs> so, love it. I have to rehome so many normal dogs, tiny little small dogs and people can't cope with those. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to actually having this fantasy, and I've got to say Game of Thrones does not help with things like that, people do feel that they quite like the idea of having one of these magnificent the animals. Wolf. So yes, the fantasy is fabulous, but you have to really know and understand wolves and wolf dogs to know the reality of what you're taking on. He loves leather. So the back of my sofa is non-existent. In fact, quite frankly, the front and the sleeves of my sofa are, are non-existent too. He, by the time he was five months old, he can open the fridges, he can open all the drawers, he can open all the cupboards. So you'd need security locks and everything. Uh, I would never dream of leaving him in the home unsupervised at all. It just, it just can't be done. They're phenomenally powerful. Mm -hmm. They're athletic. They can go over hugely high fences. They can dig under things very quickly with those big paws. So you really have to make sure that you have what they call safe containment mm. for them. So they're not necessarily the kind of dog that you could just take up the dog part and let loose to go running around everybody's two hours. Actually, he'd be very sweet with them, but I think the reaction from other people would be yes, quite fine with yes. him too. You have to make sure that you've got somewhere safe and enclosed that he can have a good run around privately in a good play because you can't mm. guarantee that you're going to be able to provide that for him every day on a walk mm. scenario. And with a, a, a dangerous um, wildlife license that people have to have, can you explain to people what the laws are within the UK and why, where he falls within this? Okay, so he, he would be exempt from anything like that because he's multi-generational. Uh, the Dangerous Wild Animal Act is there largely to protect wild animals. So you obviously couldn't have a wolf, that would be unfair to wolves and it would be uh, unfair to people out in public if they just came across a wolf randomly. Um, the, the wolf would struggle to cope uh, mm. being asked to live a, a, as a pet, really. Yeah. Um, and the same goes for what they call F1 and F2. So that's the offspring of a wolf and the grandchildren of a wolf. Now, once you get to F3 and beyond, so the great grandchildren and down, they are starting then to be considered multi-generational and at that point then you, you no longer need a, a dangerous wild animal license. So it's not actually to do with the content, it's more to do with actually the number of generations where they've been selectively bred for the right kind of characteristics. They went to them like a good boy. So when he was young, he absolutely loved everybody and really, um, 
anxiety has come in later, a little bit with hormones, but also as a result of bad experiences. He had a nasty accident when he was about a year old. He got caught on, on a wire fence. Oh, God. Um, was that trying to jump it? That was trying to jump it. When you have a high content wolf dog like this, everything needs to be positive, positive, positive. Absolutely. people shouting, being mean, and God forbid hitting an animal like this is never it gonna never work. It never works. It never, ever, ever works. The vast majority of dogs I help as a behaviorist mm. of all breeds have had a bad experience and that's tainted them. I think the thing is when it comes to living with them, they are absolutely a way of life. They're not a, a lifestyle accessory. They want to really have an active, participating role in the family. They're never going to be the sort of animal that you take them for a walk in the morning and they're happy to sleep on the sofa the rest of the day. Natalie, you, you love agility, because of course I can see all this incredible yes. doggy agility <laughs> stuff around us. Winston <laughs> loves his agility. It's a real great way to stimulate him and engage him. So yeah, it's absolutely one of his favourite things. Fantastic. Well, can you show me some of the things that he yes, can do? Yes, come on then, let's oh, go excellent. have a go. Brilliant. <laughs> what I find is the agility is a great way to make listening to me fun. I think when you're training one of these animals, they've got to enjoy listening to you. They're not going to listen to you because they have to or they must. Walk on, wait. Turn around. Good, step up. Good. You can do it too, Summer? Step up. Good. So we're going to start by doing the little A-frame, uh, which is just up, up, up. Then we've got the seesaw. Uh, it does what it says on the tin, really. You can't wait to get going, can you, Winston? Come on then. And then we're going to do a few jumps, and then we'll see if we can squeeze them through the tunnel. Sit. Good boy. Wait. Wait. Winston. Hop, 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 hop. Good boy. Seesaw. Yay. Hop. 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 Okay, Annika, so now it's your turn to have a go. Joy! <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. okay, up, 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 up. Good boy, seat <laughs> We're going to ask him to sort of settle and stop and back off when we ask as well. Wait, wait. Oh, not bad. Good boy. Good lad. And wait, wait, wait before. Good boy, Winston. So we've got some nice, uh, tasty bones for lunch now for them. Uh, part of their natural diet, they have some bones every other day, which Winston can't wait for. Yeah, I know, good boy, come on. Well, we've got to get some to your lady friends too. Come on, we come. Good lad, good lad. Let's go off into the garden. Oh, you possibly want some food. Come on then, this way, this way. Yeah, good boy, Winston. take them very long to finish that off now but it's a nice little thank you snack when they've done well for a while. Lovely. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I've had a fantastic day today finding out all about these incredible high content wolf dogs and Winston is incredible. He's absolutely beautiful. If you'd like to find out more about watermill wolves and pop by the links that I'm going to pop below. Natalie does lots of work with behavior. She does agility. And if you want any advice on having one of these dogs, and she is definitely somebody that you can talk to to get more insight into this incredible breed. And I'll catch up with you. He's trying to get away, but you know, that's not his fault. Please be sure. <laughs> please be sure to tune into another episode next week and subscribe to my channel and I will bring you some more exciting episodes on wolves, wolf dogs, whoops, and animal conservation. Bye for now.